from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. This is an isolated event for Valley City, so it's definitely one of those things that, that shocks the conscience. A man attacks a woman and tries to sexually assault her in a park. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Valley City police are still looking for the man. It happened Friday night. The woman was able to fight off her attacker before running home and calling police. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker shows us that where, wherever you live, crimes like this can happen, and you may be putting yourself at risk if you think it'll never happen in your community. It's kind of scary that it can happen. I mean, I grew up in a small town. I mean, we had less than 100 people, so stuff like that didn't happen. And this is kind of a small town, too. So to hear about things like that actually happen, it's kind of, I mean, it is scary, but it, it does happen. Trisha Albert lives less than a block from City Park. She says the attempted sexual assault has her and the college students who know about it thinking twice about taking late night strolls. Don't, like, don't walk alone or don't go alone. Um, always make sure somebody knows where you're at or you have, like, your phone, your cell phone. I mean, everyone has a phone nowadays to keep it, I mean, with you. Make sure people know where you're at so... You know, things like this don't happen. The attacker hasn't been caught, so is there a threat to your safety? It's unknown at this time. Uh, we are doing some extra patrols in the area, just trying to make sure that if anybody is out and about in that area, um, we're urging the public, you know, to do the, the personal safety things that they need to do, uh, perhaps traveling in a group or having a cell phone with you, you know, different ways to contact us if you do see something. Lieutenant Hatcher says he's hopeful the evidence they have will help them track down the assaulter. I would just ask anybody if they have any information to get a hold of us. Um, even the smallest detail at this point may be the, the detail that we need. Albert offers a reason behind why bad things like this are happening not just in Valley City, but across the region. As the pop or population gets bigger, more things that you see in like bigger cities come more to these smaller cities as they grow and it kind of just spreads. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. The attacker is described as a black man between 5'8 and 5'11 with short black curly hair, broad shoulders, weighing between 180 and 200 pounds. If you have any information about this case, contact Valley City Police. Thieves are leaning in, offering a compliment, and then they're gone, taking your wallet or purse with them. It's happening to women near the Twin Cities, and investigators there think the culprits are part of a theft ring. As we approach Black Friday and the holiday shopping season, many of us will be hitting our stores locally, including those here at the West Acres Mall. That's where our cameras are finding plenty of instances where women sit down for a bite to eat, slinging their bag over the chair. Most women we talk with saying it's a matter of convenience. I'm pretty conscious that it's there. I mean, I pay attention to kind of who walks behind me and stuff. It all depends upon where I'm sitting, whether or not I put it there. You know, if I was out in the middle of the food court, probably not. It would be on my lap, probably. While it might be uncomfortable, it's much safer putting your bag on your lap or between your feet. Another nice November day. I hope you had a chance to take advantage of it. Hutch, super moon night, right? Yes, and for now, there's a few clouds outside, but mostly moony. If you look out into the eastern sky, you're seeing that moon rise. That is the super moon. Get out and take a glimpse of it. While that moon is as close to Earth as it's been in over 40 years. Here's a look at temperatures today, peaking at around 50 degrees. We did have some wind. We did have some fog to start the day, but still well above average. A few showers showing up on the radar right now in northeast Montana. That's heading east along the international border, so a chance of some overnight sprinkles there. For us in the FM area, nearly steady temperatures in the mid to upper 40s through the evening. Still a little breezy out there, however. Enjoy this mild stretch while you can. Big time changes are in the offing as we close out this work week for some significant and measurable snow along with wind. I'll have the latest on all of that in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Hutch. And remember, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team Weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. Some streets in downtown Bismarck were closed off this afternoon during a standoff between police and protesters of the Dakota Access Pipeline. A demonstration with a couple hundred protesters began at the state capitol, causing a lockdown there around noon before the protesters marched downtown. Law enforcement closed off nearby streets and set up a roadblock at an intersection. 
The standoff between uh, the two lasted for more than two hours. The event remained peaceful with activists locking their arms and praying. Bismarck police say no arrests were made and the group left about four o'clock. A massive search around Bemidji for a missing teenager came up empty today. 17-year-old Jeremy Jourdain of Cass Lake was last seen walking away from a Halloween party in Bemidji two weeks ago. Jordan is described as six feet, four inches tall, 165 pounds, and was last seen wearing a gray Nike sweater and blue jeans. Today, 90 law enforcement officers from around the state searched a three square mile area on the south side of town. It's believed that Jordan may have walked down a nearby road in an effort to return to his home in Cass Lake. The search also included boat, boats uh, of Lake Bemidji, searching also Irving Lake. Plus, a Border Patrol helicopter was on hand in a case that has gone cold. Is this kind of a, the last big effort before the cold and snow cover hits? Correct. This is one more attempt to go out and find where he may be and uh, hope so we can get him back. Maston says they have not received any new tips in the case. If you have any information, you're asked to call Bemidji Police at 218-333-9111. A local father contacted our whistleblower hotline upset post-election bullying is happening here in the valley. With chants of build the wall and racist messages being reported nationwide since the election, it's a topic many schools and parents are keeping an eye on. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop talks with the family who says it's a disappointment. I may not completely agree with your views, but I will defend to the death your right to have them. Father of two, Tim Smith, says he has had numerous talks with his children about the difference of opinions during the election season. He was shocked to hear from his daughter about students bullying others and chanting, build the wall at Horizon Middle School. I felt sad for the other people. But I was still disappointed with the way the students behaved. Um, it's not Minnesota nice. You know, North Dakota nice. Horizon Middle School has two confirmed cases of bullying. The principal says there was one incident on election day and another the day after. The principal says they're teaching students to work through their differences, the issue now being forced because of the election. Across the country, alleged incidents of hate speech are happening, much of it on social media. Most recently trending on Twitter was rape Melania. According to the Washington Post, the picture of the sign at an anti-Trump rally was taken and spread on social media. Twitter responded to a Washington Post inquiry saying that the phrase trended because people denounced it, not because people advocated sexual assault. They're harassing Latinos, Muslims. I am so saddened to hear that, and I say stop it if it if it helps, I, I will say this, and I'll say it right to the camera, stop it. President-elect Donald Trump said in an interview on 60 Minutes for his supporters to knock it off. Smith just wants parents to remember it is important to speak with your children about the differences of opinions and recognize you are role models for your kids. There's lots of times when you think the kids aren't looking, and they are. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. First Lady Melania Trump joined her husband on the 60 Minutes interview last evening, saying her cause as First Lady will be bullying on social media. The Grand Forks County Sheriff's Department is notifying the public that a high-risk sex offender is now living in Emirato, North Dakota. 46-year-old Juan Ramon Hernandez is living in the 2200 block of Oak Avenue Northeast. He was convicted of rape back in 2002 in Walsh County after he broke into a woman's home held a knife to her throat and threatened to kill her if she didn't have sex with him. He was also convicted of third-degree criminal sexual conduct back in 1997 after having sex with a 14-year-old girl in a motel room in Clay County, Minnesota. Hernandez was released from jail just a few months ago. It's eight times stronger than morphine and more powerful than fentanyl. Tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, Nicole Johnson reports on a new drug danger called pink being blamed for killing teenagers around the country. Emergency crews dealt with a small acid spill. It happened on University Drive south of Fargo today. The call came in after police noticed a light fog about 11.15 this morning near Duane's House of Pizza. Firefighters told Valley News Live it appeared that a carton of muriatic acid fell off of a vehicle and began to leak. They rerouted traffic because they didn't want people driving through the fog or breathing in the acid fumes. The spill was contained to a small area. Firefighters and hazmat used several thousand gallons of water to clean up that scene. 
Zebra mussels have been found in another area lake, this time in Franklin Lake in Ottertail County. The Minnesota DNR says they have checked four different locations on the lake and turned up five adult mussels. They say they'll do a more extensive search of the lake and consider options on what to do about them early next spring. What started as an idea to help those with peanut allergies. Later on Valley News Live at 6, how this healthy high protein spread is actually made. Gray, foggy, and much cooler than our record-setting weather that we had on Sunday. But not a bad start to the week. Still 11 degrees above average for this time of the year. Coming up, big time changes for the late week. I'll have an update on that, and we'll look at your forecast right after this. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live. 